Hey everyone, here's a very sensitive balance that I built that's capable of measuring down to about 10 or 20 micrograms. So this project was based on a design demonstrated and built by Paul Grohe, and I'll put a link in the description. I started by taking apart an old panel meter that came out of a broken vacuum gauge. One thing to keep in mind is that most panel meters uh, are 1 milliamp full scale, and the DC resistance of these is often about 50 ohms. So despite having meters for uh, different volt ranges and different uh, current ranges, generally it's just the resistors that are changed and the actual movement is almost always uh, one milliamp. Although for really sensitive current meters you can get 100 microamp or even, even more sensitive ones. So I took the, just the guts of the meter out and mounted them on this acrylic block and then added to it one of these opto interrupters, a slit type opto interrupter. So with three wires there's a common uh, a power supply for an LED, an infrared LED shining on one side and there's a photodiode on the other which is the third lead. So uh, when, the, when the path is clear the infrared shines on the photodiode and uh, we get some current through the diode. Here's what the circuit looks like. We've got the photodiode here so that when light is shining on it it will pass some current in the reverse direction uh, and the output of this op amp circuit is driving the meter and so what we have here is a servo loop so that when the uh, light beam is blocked uh, it sends more current into the meter and pulls the needle up and then when there's light hitting this it tries to pull the meter back down so it's constantly servoing so that the uh, photodiode receives just the right amount of light and that just the right amount is set by this pot over here. This is the gain of the op amp circuit and it doesn't seem to have a huge effect on this thing, mainly because the photodiode turns on and off very quickly. Just the physical arrangement of this opto isolator means that as soon as the beam brake comes down, the, the whole circuit either goes off to on very suddenly. And that's bad because uh, the, the circuit does tend to oscillate very easily. So to make this circuit at all stable, I have to tune this pot really carefully to get it into a stable area. And I tried adding filters and that sort of thing, and uh, it really doesn't work. What it actually needs is either a, a more um, gradual sensor here, so that we get some analog values before the thing suddenly cuts on or off, or, and or more physical damping in the meter. Uh, but I couldn't figure out how to do damping without also affecting the accuracy of this thing. So for a quick little project, I, I didn't worry about it too much. The idea is that the voltage at this node is going to change based on uh, how we load the meter. So, so if this thing's constantly trying to servo to the same exact physical point in space, if we put some mass on the tip of the needle, the meter needle, then uh, this thing's going to have to give the current or give the meter more current to pull it back up into that spot. And uh, since this thing is so sensitive, it's only one milliamp uh, full scale if the meter were mounted in a panel then very, very small current changes here will change the position of the needle. And then to get even more gain, I take the, the voltage at this node and multiply it by negative five here, and then also get rid of the offset. So when the thing is sitting there, it's, this thing happens to run at about negative 0.8 volts. So with nothing on the balance, this node is about negative 0.8. And just to make it easier to read that voltage and to get it closer to zero, uh, this offset will take care of that and get another 5x gain. So if you see, I, I can perturb it here and it will actually servo itself back. And it, it's not temperature stable, so I've just recently adjusted the pot that controls um, how snappy this thing is. But it's currently in a pretty good spot where it's not prone to oscillation and it will servo itself back. To calibrate the balance and also to check what the precision actually is, I took a piece of paper and cut out a 50 by 50 millimeter square of it and then measured the mass of that square of paper with my milligram balance and this came out to be about 190 milligrams. So then to check a really small mass uh, what I did was cut a 1 by 1 millimeter section of that so a 25 hundredth of that and that comes out to be about 76 micrograms. So to check the scale just quickly to see you know approximately what the precision of this thing would be uh, I'm, I'll put the, the one by one millimeter piece of paper on there. So currently I've got the, the plastic bin over the top just to keep air currents down and it's coming in at about 48 millivolts let's say. There's quite a bit of noise and I haven't really done a whole lot to, um, to reduce the noise. 
Okay, so I'll lift the plastic cover up and place the little measured, the one by one millimeter piece of paper here. Okay. Okay, so now we're reading about 70 millivolts. So the delta there of maybe 22 millivolts corresponds to uh, 76 micrograms. I've been having problems with the plastic cover. I think the static charge on it is actually uh, making the thing even worse than keeping the air currents away. So I've cut a two by two millimeter piece of uh, paper to see, uh, to test the linearity of the system. So 76 micrograms corresponded to about uh, 20 millivolts or 22, so this should be four times that. And so we're reading eh, about 45 millivolts. It is kind of wandering quite a bit. Okay. Okay, so this is really good. So if, if the reading here is 125 and we had 45, that's 80, which is exactly four times 20. So the system appears to be pretty linear. Okay, so we're back to about 45 millivolts. And I'll try putting a single eyelash on the uh, platform there. I'd say that's reading about 55, so 10 millivolts. My uh, measurement of a, of a single one of my eyelashes is probably more like 35 to 40 micrograms. It's entirely possible that eyelashes weigh different amounts too. Okay, we're still hovering about that 45 millivolt background, so if I place a single uh, grain of sugar, that's really close to 70, so a single grain of sugar is probably about 75 micrograms or thereabout. With better construction technique to eliminate some more of the noise and also really high low pass filtering so that the thing will sample over the course of you know five or ten seconds to generate a reading, it should be possible to extract a fair bit more precision out of this. So getting down to uh, single digit micrograms uh, shouldn't be too hard. I tried extending the, the lever arm here further out you know to, to make the thing more sensitive basically uh, but that didn't work very well because it, it added so much mass to the to the needle that um, avoiding oscillation was even more difficult than it already is. Okay, hope you found that interesting. See you next time. Bye.